ask that the grace to be the doers of this way, the Lord will help you this morning. You want to do the will of God? You want to be a real Christian indeed? In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning. Lord, we just pray that as you come into your word, I pray that, Lord, you will minister your word to every one of our hearts. And the grace we need to be the doers of these things, Lord, you will give to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you will expose our heart, Lord, our eyes to see where we are in your presence. And Lord, the grace to take the right decision this morning. You will give to every one of us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we know we are not here or not to play religion. We are here so that we can serve you and so that we can spend our eternity with you. Lord, I pray you will help us that the purpose why you've brought us into this church and into the earth at such a time like this, we'll realize this and we'll prepare, Lord, for our own eternity in Jesus' name. Lord, expose our eyes to see wondrous things from your way this morning. Teach us, Lord, and the grace to be the doers of these things, Lord, you will give to every one of us this day in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because you have an answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we be seated? This morning in our Sunday message, we are considering the title, The Final Gathering and the Internal Separation. The final gathering and the internal separation. Let's open our Bible to Second Thessalonians chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. I'll read verse one of Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by our gathering together unto him. You see the mention of that word there, gathering. Our gathering. Our gathering together unto him. Brethren, you know, we are grateful to God for the privilege we have in this our country. The privilege of the freedom of worship. You know, uh, those of us who were at the last um, last month uh, Scottish um, revival, the Glasgow revival gathering, you will see that you, you hear the testimony of a Chinese sister that said that in their own country, that what they had was like they don't have the freedom of worship like we do. That what they do there, they have what they call underground churches. And that's the way they do. They, you know, they worship the Lord in underground way, even churches. But for us in this country, we thank the Lord for this freedom the Lord has given to us that we can gather together like this to hear from God. We can gather together like this to pray unto God. We can can gather together like this to also prepare to live with God in eternity. Brethren, our gathering together to hear this message like we are here today, separate us from all other people in our society, in the world today. Gathering unto Christ like we are here, separate us from the world. But here can I tell you this morning, there is still going to be a final gathering like we We've read from us from our from our, uh, from our text this morning about the final gathering where we'll be gathered together with Christ all in eternity. But then, like we say, we are talking about the final gathering and the internal separation. Internal separation in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. From verse 31 of Matthew chapter 25, the internal separation. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his holy angels with him, they shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. You see there again, gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. 
as a sheep divided his sheep from the goats and he shall set the sheep on his right arm but the goats on the left he shall say there will be an internal separation in verse 34 then shall the king say unto unto them on his right arm Come ye, bless of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. In from verse 41, verse 41, then shall he say unto them on the, la- on the left arm, Depart from me, ye cast into everlasting fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. Verse 46, and they shall go away unto everlasting punishment. But the righteous unto life eternal. The righteous unto life eternal. From that passage where we've read, you see the mention of the separation there. The final separation that will be done by the Lord himself. Not by anyone. is going to separate the sheep from the goat. Is going to separate, you know, the unbelievers from the believers. That separation will be painful. This separation will be final. And this separation will be internal. The sheep from the goat. The saint from the sinners. The wheat from the chaff. The hypocrite from the genuine Christians. The godly from the worldly. The members of the same family separated. You know, God is going to do this at the final gathering of every person to him. The question I want to ask you this morning, when the final gathering will be done and the internal separation will be made by the Lord, which side will you be? That's what you need to consider this morning. You know, like I say, we are not here to play religion. We are here to prepare for our eternity. We are here to prepare. You know, coming to church is good. But not just coming to church to be gathered to hear the word of God. Prepare yourself for the final gathering and the internal separation that will happen at the time of the final gathering. Begin to think this morning. Wait, what side will you be? On the left hand or on the right hand? We've read it from the scriptures. There are punishment for those that will be on the left arm and there is a reward for those that will be on the right arm. I pray that on that final day when the saints will be gathered up we all will be on the right hand in Jesus name. That's why we are considering this message this morning. The final gathering and the internal separation. For better understanding of our message, we want to consider this under three sort heading. Point one, we want to consider the goats and the sheep in the church. The goats and the sheep in the church. Pastor, what are you saying? Goats and sheep? Yes, goat and sheep. Believers and non-believers. The wheat and the shafts. The hypocrites and the genuine. The godly and the worldly in the church. The church of Christ. Ah, pastor, I thought that the church is only made for the people who are godly. No, no, not at all. The goats and the sheep in the church. We look at that in point one. Then point two, we look at the great separation at Christ's coming. The great separation at Christ's coming. Then point three we consider before we pray. The gathering of saints internally with Christ. The gathering of saints internally with Christ. Let's go straight to point one. The goats and the sheep in the church. The goats and the sheep in the church. Let's go back again to our text where we've read Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. I will read verse start, verses 32 and 33 there. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from what? The goats. The goats. 
the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. But the goats, where will they be? On the left hand. On the left hand. You know, these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I'm not the one saying goats. It's Jesus that said it. I'm not the one that called you goat. It's Jesus that said it. He says there that they shall gather before him all nations. As a, and he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. The question I'm asking this morning. Who are you? A sheep or a goat? Who are you? Who are you? Begin to ask yourself that question. As you are hearing the word of God this morning. You begin to examine yourself. Am I a sheep? In the church? Or am I a goat? In the church, in the visible church, in every congregation today, can I tell you this morning, there is a mixture of goats and sheep in the church. Can I tell you this morning, there is a mixture of both saints and sinners in the church. You know that's why the church, we don't drive people away. We don't say, oh, why do you dress like this? Don't come to the church. No, we allow them to come in. In this church, we don't drive people away. We say, oh, why are you behaving like this? No, we allow them to come in. Because it is not the responsibility of the pastor to separate the goat from the, from the sheep. It is not the responsibility of any worker to separate the sheep from the goat. It is the doing and the responsibility of God himself. There is a mixture, can I tell you, in the visible church of the good and the bad, of the wheat and the tears, of the sincere Christian and the hypocritical worship of God today. And you know, what we are talking about today is something that has been even right from the Old Testament. Like we learned in our search the scriptures this morning. Open your Bible to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. The sheep and the goats in the church. The sheep and the goat. Who are you? Exodus chapter 12. I'll read verses 41 of Exodus chapter 12. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the same, the self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. If that is where the Bible stop, they will say, oh, all the host of Israel, all the people of God. But the Bible did not stop there. Look at verse 38. Mixture of the goats and the sheep in the church. Verse 38. Look at what the Bible says there. And a mixed multitude. Oh, I thought verse 41 says, All the hosts of the Lord. Is the Bible not lying? Look at what it says there. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. Oh, pastor, I'm a member of Deeper Life Bible Church. Thank God for you. I don't, you're a member, but it's only God that knows if, I, if you're a goat or a sheep in the church. The pastor may not know. The house fellowship leaders may not know. We may all look at you and say, oh, she is one of us. He is one of us. But a day is coming when the goats will be separated from the sheep. He says they are a mixed multitude. I'm asking you the question. Are you part of the mixed multitude? Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. Look at the result of the mixed multitude now. Numbers chapter 11 verse 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lost him. And the children of Israel also wept again 
and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? You see the peri or the meat mouth is in there. You see the peas or the meat mouth is in there. The Bible says there, the meat mouth is fell and lost it. And as a result of that, they caused the children of Israel pain, to weep. Maybe you are the mixed multitude that is causing that brother to weep. Maybe you are the mixed multitude that is causing that sister to weep. He says there, as a result of that mixed multitude. That's why you want to examine your life this morning. You want to examine yourself this morning. Who are you? A sheep or a goat? In the church, you see from where we've read that there is the mixed multitude, even right from the time of the children of Israel when they were redeemed, when they were saved. Can I tell you this morning also that there is in the time of Joshua there was an Achan in the army of the Lord, mixed multitude. Makes multitude. Can I tell you this morning? In the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, there was a Judas Iscariot among the twelve. And do you know, brethren, those twelve people that were selected by the Lord, we are talking about God Himself. Because Jesus is God the Son, is that not so? He knew the beginning from the end. How you begin to wonder, ah, Jesus, don't you know that this man will be, will be, will be the Judas Iscariot? Why did you select him? Because that is how it has been in Bible days. The mixed multitude. The mixed multitude. So I was telling somebody, I said, please, if Jesus cannot get perfect 12 disciples, perfect, because he himself said it. Do you know that he himself said it? Let me show you what he said. In John chapter John chapter 13. Open your Bible quickly. The sheep, the goats and the sheep in the church. The goats and the sheep in the church. Rather, John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 30. Uh, verse 70 of John chapter 6. Jesus answered them. Have not I chosen you twelve and one of you? What did he say there? Not two, not three, but one of you. And this is Jesus, the Savior of the world. You want to tell me, Jesus, can't you save Judas Iscariot? Jesus, Jesus can save him, but he made himself a devil. He says there, have I not chosen you to him? Have I not chosen you to him? Pastor, what's the implication of that? The implication is, not everybody that comes to the church is a sheep. Not everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody that are here. Can I tell you this morning, according to the word of God that we are reading, not everybody seated here listening to me is a sheep. goats and the sheep. And the, that's why you need to examine your life this morning. Who are you? Goat and sheep. Who are the sheep? Let me just say, who are the sheep? The sheep are all men and women who have been convicted of their sins, who have left themselves condemned sinners and fled to Christ for salvation. All who had believed in Christ and have received forgiveness and grace for a new life. All who love and followed Christ. Those are the sheep. All who have received. Are you born again? Those are the sheep. All who loved and followed Christ. Not follow the church. Follow Christ. Are you following Christ? Are you in your life after the life of Christ? Are we living the life that Jesus wants us to live? Are we born again? Or we follow Christ? And the sheep are those who live for God's glory and serve God in sincerity. Those are the sheep. Those are the sheep. All who have taken Christ as their only confidence. No any man. Those are the sheep. All who have taken Christ and the Bible. All who have taken the Bible as their only guide. And they ate sin as their various enemy. 
those are the sheep and all who have who look to heaven as their only own those are the sheep not to uk not those who want to die in uk ah, i must live in this country by all means this is not heaven uk is not heaven you see people what they do to live in this country the first food they're going to the occultism they're going to the dubious things they do to live in this country you know those are not sheep we are talking about the sheep that no matter the place where you are you look at everyone as your only country those are the sheep those are the sheep and the father knows them it's not the pastor we may know you I may see you, I may see it in your behavior as a sheep. We may not feel okay because we've seen you a kind of a sheeply character in you. We not make you a worker. But the question is, does the father know you as a sheep? You want to examine your life this morning. Does God know you as a sheep? You want to look at your life. Is your life? It, do you take the Bible as your only guide? Or you bring in the philosophy of men, the theories of men. Say, oh, these days uh, we must put Bible and technology together. Uh, the Bible says this, but what does science say? That's not sheep. That's not the character of the sheep. The Lord Jesus Christ beholds them and he sees them as truly sheep. He sees them as those who are born again. Who are then who are not the goats? Who are not the goats? Who are the goats in the church? All men and women who have no saving faith in Christ. They are the goats. They come to church, no saving faith in Christ. They carry the Bible. No saving faith in Christ. The dress as we dress, no saving grace in Christ. Those are the goods. Who are the goods? All unconverted admirers of Simon's. Who hear with delight? Oh, they hear the word and say, Oh, thank God for our pastor. Thank God. When he comes like this, he gives us those three points one, two, three. And they take note, they admire the Simon's. But yet, they remain in their sin. Those are the goods. They hear the word of God, but they don't do it. Those are the goods. Who are the goods? All those who have never submitted themselves to the yoke of Christ. Ah, um, Pastor, this one you say self-denial is not for me. Anything my flesh wants, I will go for it. Those are the goods. Because they have not submitted themselves to bear the yoke of Christ in the days of their youth. Those are the goods. Those are the goods. Are you among the sheep or among the sh- among the goods? Can I tell you, you cannot stand on the middle wall. You cannot say, oh, have a seat on the, f- on, the f- on the f- on the f- on the fence. I am one leg a goat and one leg a sheep. Mm, there's nothing like that. In the kingdom of God, there's nothing like neutrality. I'm asking you this morning, whose side are you? Are you a goat or a sheep in the church of the living God? Ask yourself this morning, are you a new creature in Christ? Have you put off the, new ma- the old man and put on the new man? Are you born again? Have you ever felt convinced of your sin, convicted of your sin? Have you truly repented of those sins? Have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you, have you consecrated your life, your heart to the Master? Or oh, you are part of the mixed multitude. You dress as we dress. You talk as we talk. And yet, you are still a good. Examine yourself this morning. Because a day is coming where there will be a great separation at Christ's coming. This leads us to point two. The great separation at Christ's coming. The great separation at Christ's coming. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 31 again I read. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all his holy angels with him, 
Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. He shall separate, he shall separate. He shall separate. A great separation is coming, brethren. There is going to be a final shifting, an internal separation. At present, we have the believers and the unbelievers. We have the converted and the unconverted. We have the holy and the old and the unholy, all sitting side by side in the church of the living God. But can I tell you this morning? It will not always be like this forever. It will not always be. That we always have the goat and the sheep in the church. It will not always be. Because there's going to be a final separation. Where the Lord will separate, like we were there, the sheep from the goat. In verse 33, and he shall set the sheep on his right arm, both the goat on the left. Then shall the king say unto the right, unto do, unto them on his right arm, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. From the foundation, come, you bless, you bless of the father, prepare, we receive the kingdom given to you from the foundations of the heart. The time of separation is coming. The question is, where will you be? No minister or not can know the heart of everyone in his congregation. No minister. The wise and the foolish virgins, those who are professing religion, and those who are pure in heart, all of them will only be separated at the time of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we have Ananias and Sapphira in the church. Today we have Achan in the army of God's people. Today there is always a Judas among the twelve. But the time is coming when all the Achan in the army of God's people will be exposed. A time is coming when Judas is carried among the twelve. We just naturally be separated from the people of God. A time is coming when the Ananias and the Sapphirias in the church of the living God, they are going to be separated from the army, from the people of God. The question I'm asking you this morning, or at the time of that great separation, whose side will you be? Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Verses 12 and 13. Matthew chapter 22, verses 12 and 13. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou either, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Do you see that? On that day, when the Lord will separate you, you will be speechless. You have nothing to say. You have no accusation to give to God. Because if you want to accuse God like this, God will just play this message. This message we are hearing today. On that day, God will just play it to you and say, you were there in that church on the 5th of June. When my son preached this message, the goats and the sheep in the church, didn't you hear it? You will be speechless. You have nothing to say. Because all the evidences, God will just bring everything up before you. The question I'm asking you this morning, why do you want to wait till that day? Put on. The wedding garment is here now. Put it on. Don't wait till that day that you'll be found naked. That all you just have is religion. You'll be playing religion all throughout your life. How long will you continue to play religion, my brother? How long will you continue to play religion, my sister? Now is the time to put on the wedding garment. Look at it. Because he had no that way. He didn't have the wedding garment. In verse 13, then said the king to the servant, bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Don't wait till that day. 
Don't wait till that day. When the Spirit speaks to you now, there is but one thing to do. Just obey. Just obey. There is salvation today, my brother. There is salvation for you today, my sister. Today, now is the acceptable time. Don't postpone it till tomorrow. Now, when the word comes to you, maybe you've been part of the mixed multitude all along. You may be a worker. There is nothing like I'm a worker in the house of God, in the, in the kingdom of God. You say, oh God, I come with the title, I'm a worker of the deeper Christian life ministry. That title worker will perish here on earth. Do you know that? There is nothing like title in the kingdom of God. Don't say, oh God, eh, I'm a worker. Worker, do, being a worker doesn't qualify you into the kingdom. What qualifies you into the kingdom? Salvation. Repentance. Conviction of your sin. And acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Because the great separation is coming. On that day, what a great day will it be? When the piercing eyes that saw Achan and Gehazar shall search out all the hidden things of your life and will separate the hypocrites from the congregation of the righteous, what a day will it be? But then, there will only be two groups of people on that day. On that there cannot be middle group, there cannot be second chance. On that great separation day, there will only be two group. One group will be all godly, the other group will be all ungodly. You shall be by themselves, and you know a great gulf will be between those two groups, the godly and the ungodly. The question I'm asking you this morning. Think about this. Where will you be? Will you be in the group of the godly? Or will you be in the group of the ungodly? Because a great day of separation is coming. Where the goats will be separated from the sheep. And this separation, what do we mean by this separation? The sheep will be separated unto the good Savior forever. They will sit with Christ and they will live with him eternally. The sheep will behold his glory and we also share in the glory of the Father. But the goat, the goat will be separated to everlasting punishment. Daniel chapter 12 those two groups, they cannot be middle groups. The great separation at Christ's coming. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2 of Daniel chapter 12. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to what? And I can't hear you. Do you see that? It's just two group, no middle group. No, uh, some will spend fifty years in everlasting content, and after the fifty years, they will not transfer them into everlasting life, like some religion teaches us today. And so, when you die, you will go to some place. You will just suffer there temporarily, and after what they call purgatory, and after that, you will not be taken again from there into everlasting life. There is nothing like that. On that great separation, we only have two: some to everlasting life, and the others to everlasting content. The question is, where will you spend your eternity? Where will you spend your eternity? Think about this: the great separation. The great separation for the sheep and for the goat. What, ca what characterizes this great separation? If you write that word great, write it vertically. For the goat, the G in that word great, for them the separation will be grievous. To be grievous. Painful. Pun they will be punished. But for the sheep, that separation, the G, will be glorious. It will be glorious. For the goat, that separation, they will be full of our regrets. 
regret. Oh, had I known. Oh, had I known. Oh, I had the message on the 5th of June. Had I known. They'll be full of regret. But for the sheep, that separation, they'll be full of rejoicing. They'll be full of rejoicing. For the goat, that separation, he, they'll be excommunicated forever. Excommunication, that's the separation. Why for the sheep, that separation, they will be, it will, for them, it will be for exaltation. They will be exalted into the presence of the most high God. For the God, that separation, the A, it will be for adversity, pains, troubles, sorrows, adversities will be for them. Why for the sheep, that separation will lead them to abundance. Abundant life, abundant joy, abundant everything for the tea for the goat the separation it will lead to tribulations tribulations why for the tea for the sheep the separation it will lead for triumphant entry triumphant entry into the presence of god the question i'm asking you this morning on that great day of separation when the sheep will be separated from the goat where will you be where will you spend your eternity? Think on this thing. Not just be playing religion. Not just be coming to church. Not just be putting on the title. I'm a worker. I'm a worker. Think on this. Are you part of the mixed multi? Today is the day of your salvation. Today you can repent. You can ask for forgiveness. And God will forgive you. Today you can come to the law. And the blood of Jesus Christ will wash you whiter than snow. Today you can seek the face of the Father and ask for mercy and ask for grace and the Lord will pardon you. Don't wait till that day. Don't wait till the day of the great separation because that day is coming. Where will you spend your eternity? Point three before we pray. The gathering of saints eternally with Christ. The gathering of saints Internally with Christ. I've, ch- I've read it already. That there's going to be a great gathering. That we, the saints, those of us who are born again, those who take the Bible as their only guide, those who have consecrated their life to the Lord, those who have given all, all they have to the Master, and say, Jesus, all that I am, all that I will ever be, you own thee, take all of me. For those people, there will be a final gathering. We will be gathered, we will be gathered together internally to be with the Savior. In First Corinthians, First Thessalonians chapter 4, First Thessalonians chapter 4 of First Thessalonians, how we verse 16 of First Thessalonians chapter 4, the f- gathering of saints internally with Christ, the gathering of saints internally with Christ. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. It says, There, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with his child with the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall do what? shall rise forth the dead in Christ shall rise forth then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord what a great gathering will this be when all the saints from all the congregation any church at all we are not talking about church here we are not talking about oh I am a member of deeper life I am a member of so so and so church I am a this congregation I am that congregation on that final that that way, all those who are born again, they may be in any congregation. The Lord Himself, when He appears, He will come to take all of us to be with Him. Oh, I wish you would be there. I wish you join me to be with the Lord in the air. You know, that you are a child of a pastor does not make you that, oh, I will go with my daddy. No, there's no you must have this experience of being born again. You must be saved because those that will make it in the air to meet the Lord Jesus Christ on that final day, the gathering of the saints are those who are born again, are those who are living the Lord, the life of a Christian. The Lord himself will gather his people 
together together we gather us together to be with him this gathering will be done before the great tribulation will begin your now this gathering will be done before the you know the antichrist will come to unleash his terror upon the people of their first corinthians chapter 15 first corinthians chapter 15 I will read from verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Brethren, it is not every believer that we die. We shall not all sleep. Some of us will still be alive. Some of us will still be waiting for Christ at the time of his coming. So it's not possible. You see, we shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed. But we shall all, we shall all, both the dead in Christ from the days of Abel. From the days of the creation of man, the time of Adam, to the time when Christ will come, we shall all, all those who have died in Christ, we shall all be changed in a moment. Everybody say in a moment. Everybody say in a moment. Everybody say in a moment. But when what we are talking about this morning, we happen in a moment. The Bible will say in a twinkling of an eye. Can you trick your eye? Can you trick your eye? Trick your eye. Trick your eye. Trick your eye. Everybody trick your eye. Don't look at me. Just trick your eye. Trick your eye. What does it cost? How many minutes does it cost you to trick your eye? Is it up to one minute? Is it up to a minute? That's what the Bible means by in a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. Before you say go, we are gone. Before you look like this, we are gone. You know what Jesus said? Two shall be gathering. Do you know it is possible husband and wife sleeping together on the same bed? One will be taken and the other will be left behind. It is possible. Jesus himself said it. Two shall be gathering. One will be taken and the other left behind. That's why you want to examine your life this morning. You say, I'm a wife and my father, my husband is a leader in the church. Are you born again? Are you a Christian? Are you living the life of a child of God? You say, oh, well, I've been in this church for quite a long time. Are you? Because this thing we are talking about this money is an individual thing. It's an individual thing. Husbands, wives, let's help each other. We can help each other to make the rapture. But do you know, the decision of who will make the rapture is in the hand of God. Is in the hand of God. All we need to is to make sure that your wife is not missing, your husband is not missing, your children will not is not missing, and the Lord will help every one of us in Jesus' name. The time is short, brethren. The time we don't have time again. You think we have time? Look at all the things happening in the war. Look at look at the tsunami that happened some months ago in Japan. Look at the thing that swept the whole world. Look at the corruptions that is happening in the world. When I came to this country, I was surprised. I thought it was only in Africa that politicians are corrupt. I was surprised that even in this country, this country that say they have education, this country that say they have, they are taught they are developed country, even their politicians can change receipts. Even their politicians can falsify. I can look at the corruptions happening in the war. We don't have time. Jesus will soon come. Are you ready? Because there's going to be a final gathering. The gathering of saints eternally to be with the Savior. Look at the things that is happening. The recession is happening in the world. We thought we have, uh, we have come out of reception. And yet they are telling us, just last week, just last week, the uh, economy people, they are saying, look, the forecast we had before, we thought that the economy will grow, but we had to downgrade. and say, look, uh, it's not like that again. Look at the things that is happening all over the world. Men's heart failing them because of the things happening in the world. I read of somebody, a millionaire, a millionaire. You know, he went into bankruptcy and you know what he did? He went to his house that day. He killed his wife. Killed his only daughter. Killed his only daughter. Killed himself and set the whole house on fire. And set the whole house on fire. Look, what is the thing so terrible happening in the world? We don't have time. We don't have time. Jesus will soon come. Jesus is coming again. Jesus will soon come. Are you ready? 
are you ready? When the saints go marching in, ask yourself this morning, will you be gathered with the redeem or you'll be gathered with the repro- with the reprobate? Will you be gathered with Christ's sheep or you'll be gathered with the goat? Are you saved? Are you born again? Are you sanctified? Are you sanctified? Are you pure? Are you holy? Are you righteous? Do you have or you have a stony heart, a rebellious heart, an unbending will, an unyielding heart? Are you a sheep or a goat in the church of the living God today? Seven things I want to quickly show us about these things gathering. Number one, purpose of the saints gathering. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 20, 21 tells us there that the Lord will gather us so that we will escape the punishment that is coming upon the old heart. That's the purpose. The Lord comes to gather us before the great tribulation. Number two, preparation for the saints gathering. We need to prepare ourselves. And how do we prepare ourselves? He that had this hope in him. The Bible says, Purified himself even as he is pure. You must be pure. You must prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be holy. That's what we are talking about. Holiness. Some people say, oh, it's deeper life thing. It's not deeper life thing. If you want to make heaven, if you want to make, if you want to be gathered with the saints on that final day, you must be pure. You must be holy. Number three, Pattern of the saints gathering. What is the pattern? We are told here, the dead in Christ shall rise forth. When Jesus comes to take his saints home, the dead in Christ shall rise forth. It's not something that will just happen anywhere. No, there is a pattern. And we have seen it there. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 5, 15 and 16 tells us that the dead in Christ shall rise forth. After that, we which are alive shall be gathered together to meet with the Lord in the air. That's the pattern. And we've seen an example in scriptures. In Enoch, the Bible says, For Enoch was not, for God who was, took him. The Lord took him. The Lord took him. That's the pattern. That's the pattern. It's like I. It's like the, the pattern of Elijah leaving the earth. When Elijah was going, the chariot of evil, they came to take Elijah or Elijah up. And as Elijah was going, Elisha saw him and he said, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, in the tricking of an eye, Elijah was gone. That's the way to be. That's the pattern of the saints gathering. But the question is, will you be there? Number four, preaching before the saints gathering. Before Jesus comes, we don't say, oh, Jesus is coming. Okay, because Jesus is coming, I lock myself in my house. I don't go any, I don't go out again. I don't go to school. I don't go to work. I don't, you know, like, um, you know, something happened last month. Somebody deceived the old lad and he gave them a date and said, Jesus is coming. And you know, all the people that said, Jesus is coming. Somebody, he went all his life savings. All his life savings he deposited because Jesus is coming. He used all his life savings and said, oh, I don't want uh, the Antichrist to use my money. And they all expect Jesus to come. Unfortunately, Jesus did not come. Now, that man that spent all his life saving is crying. What are we learning? That Jesus is coming again does not mean don't go to school, don't do this. No, what we have to do is preaching. Preaching, preaching. That's the only commission he gave us before the saints that we go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Number five, patience before the saints gathering. You, you have the need of patience. We need patience. You know, patience will make you to work carefully, to work prayerfully, to work diligently, and be expectant of the Lord's coming. Number six, Promise and profit of the saints gathering. He himself gave us that promise in John chapter 14 verses 1 to 3. He says, Behold, I go to prepare for you a place. And he says, When I go and prepare, I will come again. When he says, I will come again, that is a promise. 
Is that not a promise? All of us, all the only promise we know is that, oh, my God shall provide all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And that is all our life is dependent upon. Ah, God, provide my need. God, provide my need. God, give me this. God, give me that. But I come to tell you this morning that there is another promise that is greater than that one. And that's the promise of the gathering of the saints. The promise. Jesus himself will say, I will come again. Jesus is coming again. My brother, wipe your tears. Jesus is coming for you. My sister, wipe your tears. Jesus is coming for you. Don't, don't be down. Don't be so, why is everything like this? Be, I want to, to know that Jesus is coming again. He's coming for you. He's coming for me. And the prophet, he said, I will come. So that where I have been, there will you be with me for it. That's the pop. That's the prophet. And lastly, lastly, before we pray, participation in the saints' gathering. Participation in the saints' gathering. The question I'm asking you this morning: On whose side are you? On whose side will you be on that final day? On the right side with the sheep, or on the left side with the goats? Where? Will you spend your eternity? Think about this. You know, Thomas Watt saying, as I conclude, he said, Eternity to the godly is a day that has no sunset. Why eternity to the wicked is a night that has no sunrise? Think about this. Where will you spend your eternity? Where will you spend your eternity? They who are destined to die need not to be careful to inquire what dead are they to die, but into what place dead we usher them. That's what Augustine tells us. Think about this. What, what place, if you die today, uh, Pastor, are you praying that I will die? I'm not praying that you will die, but I'm just asking you if you die, or you think you cannot die, don't, have you not read young people dying? Young people are dying. People dying in their 40s. People dying in their 30s. People dying in their 20s. People dying even in their 10s. I'm not praying for you to die. But what I'm asking you this morning, if you should die today, which place will your death usher you into? Everlasting life or everlasting contempt? The final gathering is coming. The internal separation is coming. When the Lord we come to separate the sheep from the goats. The question is, whose side will you be? Are you a sheep or a goat in the church of the living God? Where will you spend your eternity? Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayers. Where will you spend your eternity? My brother, where will you spend your eternity? My sister, think on these things. Things we've considered today, they are grievous things. We don't just laugh over them. We've not come to entertain you this morning. We've come to give you the word of God. Are you part of the mixed multitude in the church of the living God? Examine yourself this morning. Where will you spend your eternity? When Jesus will come to take his people to him, side, where will you spend your eternity? Where will you be when the trumpet shall sound? When the saints go marching in, on whose side will you be my brother? On whose side will you be my sister? Are you part of the goats in the church of the living God? Or are you part of the sheep in the church of the living God? Where will you spend your eternity? You want to ask the Lord this morning that the Lord himself will help you. You want to pray this morning. If there's sin in your life, confess your sins to God. Tell the Lord, Lord, forgive me. Lord, cleanse me. Jesus died for you. 
He died so that you will not spend eternity in hell. Eh? He died so that you will not spend eternity in the lake of fire. You want to pray this morning. You want to ask for grace this morning and ask the Lord and say, God, forgive me. Lord, cleanse me. Lord, I come before you this morning. Save me, Lord. Ask the Lord to save you this morning. Ask the Lord to save you this morning. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask him to forgive you. Forgive you of your sins. Ask the Lord. Tell the Lord this morning. Lord, have mercy on me. If you have for, if you have, if you have if you have gone into backsliding, trace yourself back to the Lord. There is restoration for you this morning, my brother. There is restoration for you this morning, my sister. Ask the Lord this morning to forgive you, to cleanse you. Because the day is coming when the sheep will be separated from the God. The day is coming. When all those who are just hypocrites will be separated from the genuine Christian, you want to ask the Lord and ask the Lord this morning and say, God, forgive me. Jesus, come into my heart. I want to spend eternity with you. You want to ask the Lord this morning and say, God, I repent of my sin. I turn away of my sin. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, forgive me this morning. The Lord will forgive you, my brother. The Lord will forgive you, my sister. He will pardon you. If you can just be sincere before the Lord this morning, you just open up your heart. Open up yourself to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. Search me this morning. Lord, save me this morning. Lord, I surrender my life to you this morning. Surrender yourself to the Lord. Prepare for your eternity, my brother. Prepare for your eternity, my sister. Ask the Lord this morning that the Lord will change you. The Lord will transform you. If you are not yet sanctified, you want to pray this morning. Lord, sanctify me. Lord, make me holy. Lord, touch me. Take a word that damn nature in my heart, Lord. Prepare me for heaven. Prepare me for the rapture. The final God you want to go with the Lord this morning. Ask the Lord. The Lord will do it for you this morning. Now is the acceptable time. Don't wait. Don't put away the message. Won't put it by and by. Say, go. Well, I will do it another time. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the time to be sanctified. Now is the day of your salvation. Now is the time of your salvation. Now is the time of the restoration. Now is the time that you can pray unto the Lord and ask the Lord for forgiveness and ask the Lord for cleansing and the Lord will do it for you, my brother. And the Lord will do it for you, my sister. Pray this morning. He wants to change you. He wants to transform you. He wants to touch your life. He wants to forgive you. He wants to change you. He wants to prepare you for his coming. Ask the Lord this morning that the Lord will do it for you. He will do it for you. He will do it for you. be part of the goat in the church of the living God. Today you can become a sheep. Today you can become a sheep. Today you can become a sheep. Pray and ask the Lord this morning. Lord, do it for me. I want to be sheep in the fold. I don't want to be a goat. I want to be a sheep in the fold. Ask the Lord. The Lord will do it for you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father in heaven, we bless you this morning. We thank you because of this timely reminder. We thank you, Father, you have spoken to us the truth of your word this morning. Accept our thanks, Lord, in Jesus' name. We are praying unto you this morning, Father, as we have heard your word today. O oh God, we pray that when the road shall call up by yonder, when the saints in God shall rise again, when the dead in Christ shall come alive, Father, we pray, count us worthy to reign with you in eternity in Jesus' name. All we have heard this morning, we are praying, Father, help us to apply them into our life. Help us to walk as sheep and not as good. 
Help us to walk in obedience to your word. All that you have taught us, Father, we pray. Let them bear fruit in our life in Jesus' name. If there be anyone that has been as, as good before, we pray, Father, that through the word you have spoken unto us, every life of a goat be transformed this morning and the life of righteousness the life of christ be imparted into our life this day lord in jesus name we have heard of the preparation for the gathering we have heard of the purpose and the profit of this great gathering and we have heard all of preaching before this gathering father we pray all that we need to do today preparing for the gathering of the sin preaching of, of the gospel of god and father waiting upon you help us to do all this from this moment lord in jesus name if there be those that have been careless any carelessness in our life we want such to be cut off and awake us this morning that every moment we will be ready every time we will be awake we will be prepared for the coming of our lord in jesus name we are praying father none of us shall be a son of perdition none of us shall be a judas in the church but father we pray make us your elect your choosing one and let your grace be sufficient for us in jesus name father you have told us that no wise without cast us away that have come unto you we pray father none of your children be cast away lord in jesus name we thank you father we bless your name and as we are going today we pray that your presence will go with us and you will help us so that we bear fruit so that this gospel we will preach it and also encourage others that those that are without father we pray as we help us to stand we pray give all the grace to bring others in also into this promise of the lord in jesus name thank you father for answering our prayer for in jesus name we have prayed Amen. praise the lord